Welcome back coaches. This is the final module of the Coaching Foundation Skill Series. We will address the Coaching Foundation skill of developing and maintaining relationships by providing meaningful recognition. The My MTSS Technical Assistance Center would like to acknowledge and give thanks to Karen Ward, Karen Blase, in the National Implementation Research Network for sharing this work to enhance the knowledge and skills for all district and school level coaches. At the conclusion of this module, you will be able to define effective recognition, identify reasons why providing recognition to those we are coaching is important, list various forms of recognition, outline the guidelines for, for, for providing effective recognition, and list various opportunities to provide effective recognition to the teams and staff you are coaching. As a reminder, we are providing this learning for district and school level coaches so that you will have the confidence and feel competent when responding to adaptive challenges that surface when teams and staff are implementing new professional practices, new programs or systems such as an MTSS framework, a PBIS initiative or a new school-wide reading model. In this section of this module, we will be breaking down what is meant by effective recognition. As you can see, this definition identifies some key vocabulary. Words that stand out include timely, as we want to provide recognition and feedback as soon after we hear or see a team demonstrating progress toward an installation or implementation goal. Individualized, if possible, we want to give individual feedback and behaviorally specific. In other words, we want to be intentional in, spe in specifically connecting our acknowledgement or recognition of what is working at a district or school level that is moving the implementation work forward. Several research studies have noted the positive impact that recognition, acknowledgement, and positive feedback has for those working to adopt and implement new practices. Often, as a coach, we may see how the change that is happening is beginning to have positive impact. However, those close to the work might not yet recognize the positive movement. We use recognition to intentionally connect the positive change to the team's goals and the changing climate across the district or school. Using effective recognition allows coaches to build trusting and positive relationships that are more likely to be forgiving as the natural mistakes occur during initial implementation. We also know that this type of recognition has been shown to increase buy-in during the early stages of implementation as it focuses on celebrating early wins. Often as a coach, we may see how the change that is happening is beginning to have an impact when those close to the work may not yet recognize the positive movement. Bottom line, we utilize this coaching skill to connect the positive change to the team's goals and to keep the momentum of the work progressing. Most importantly, developing fluency and using this skill will lead to stronger relationships across our teams. There are various ways for coaches to provide recognition. You may choose to give compliments directly to your team or individual team members. You can even provide recognition when the individual or team is not present. For example, you might give your team a compliment during a coach meeting on how well they are accomplishing their tier one PBIS action items from their implementation plan. Of course, we want to be sure that this compliment is forwarded to the team itself, either by you or the coach coordinator or district coordinator. We always want to be mindful of celebrating at specific times throughout the process. If you are a district coach, you may want to recognize your team on improvement seen on their district capacity assessment from fall to winter. Likewise, 
a school level coach would want to celebrate with their team on meeting criterion on the PBIS or reading tiered fidelity inventory. Both level of coaches will want to recognize improvement in student outcomes, such as a reduction of office discipline referrals across all schools or improvement in a school's Acadians reading data. During and following a data analysis and review period is always an opportune time to provide recognition. As we prepare for those sessions, we will want to be thinking of ways to provide positive feedback. Let's take a look at the guidelines for giving recognition. First and foremost, if you don't mean it, please don't say it. We definitely need to be sincere and use a conversational style that is descriptive and links the recognition to an implementation concept the team is learning to use. In my previous examples, both coaches would focus their recognition on specific items on a district capacity assessment or tiered fidelity inventories. A district coach may provide positive feedback to the district implementation team on improving their score on item 10, which addresses the communication plan from the one point criteria to the two point criteria. A school level coach can provide recognition to their team during or following the facilitation of the PBIS tiered fidelity inventory by highlighting the progress the team has made on say item 1.3, which reflects the team's implementation of their school-wide behavior expectations. We don't wanna wait for perfection, but to recognize even the slightest of progress. In order to be certain our positive feedback will be meaningful to our team or an individual, we need to be prepared to include a rationale for the, for the recognition that either references or links to the team's goals, how their focus on implementation is moving the work forward, how a specific strength of an individual is providing positive movement, such as strong communication skills or the ability to see the big picture, Please pause the video and take a moment to review this recognition example. Does it meet the guidelines? What stands out to you here? Yes, this coach followed the guidelines by first thanking the district coordinator for how well the meeting was run and then specifically linking the concepts of an effective teaming structure here. They highlighted feedback on the use of an agenda and a pre-meeting sheet, both of which are components of an effective teaming structure. And they also emphasized what successful teams do to be considered a well-functioning team. In our last section of this module, we will focus on the opportunity coaches have to use this skill. Please pause the video and take a moment to reflect on your current use of this, of this skill. On a sticky note or piece of paper, list out your strengths using the skill as well as opportunities for growth. Coach coordinators, you may want to consider having the group discuss the question on this slide. As we have discussed, being prepared to use this skill requires us to be intentional by pre-identifying opportunities to do so. Here are some ideas that can help you get started. Preparing for a team meeting or professional learning session, such as a PBIS kickoff event. Following a team meeting or professional learning session, or even informally when you have an interaction with your team or a team member. Following a larger event that may be considered a milestone such as successful impl implementation of a new reading program. And generally, anytime you are connecting with someone may be the perfect opportunity to practice this skill.
Now that you've had an opportunity to reflect on your current practice of providing recognition, take a moment to prepare to practice giving recognition with your partner. The first step is to provide your context to your partner and then take turns role playing. As we conclude our learning in the coaching foundation skills, we encourage you to continue to find opportunities to practice these skills so that you feel confident and competent in your coaching role. Thank you.